Chapter 14. Economic Transformations, Commerce and Consequences, 1450-1750. I have come full circle back to my destiny, from Africa to America and back to Africa. I could hear the cries and wails of my ancestors. I weep with them and for them. This is what an African-American woman from Atlanta wrote in 2002 in the guest book of the Cape Coast Castle, one of the many ports of embarkation for slaves located along the coast of Ghana in West Africa. There she no doubt saw the whips and leg irons used to discipline the captured Africans, as well as the windowless dungeons in which hundreds were crammed while waiting for the ships that would carry them across the Atlantic to the Americas. Almost certainly she also caught sight of the infamous Gate of No Return, through which the captives departed to their new lives as slaves. The visitor's emotional encounter with the legacy of the Atlantic slave trade reminds us of the enormous significance of the commerce and human beings for the early modern world and of its continuing echoes even in the 21st century. The slave trade, however, was only one component of those international networks of exchange that shaped human interactions during the centuries between 1450 and 1750. Europeans now smashed their way into the ancient spice trade of the Indian Ocean, developing new relationships with Asian societies as a result. Silver, obtained from mines in Spanish America, enriched Western Europe, even as much of it made its way to China, where it allowed Europeans to participate more fully in the rich commerce of East Asia. Furs from North America and Siberia found a ready market in Europe and China, while the hunting and trapping of those fur-bearing animals transformed both natural environments and human societies. Despite their growing prominence in long-distance exchange, Europeans were far from the only actors in early modern commerce. Southeast Asians, Chinese, Indians, Armenians, Arabs, Africans, and Native Americans likewise played major roles in the making of the world economy during the early modern era. Thus, commerce joined empire as the twin creators of a global network during these centuries. Together, they gave rise to new relationships, disrupted old patterns, brought distant peoples into contact with one another, enriched some, and impoverished or enslaved others. They also generated new ways of expressing status, as the Working with Evidence feature on pages 634 through 41 illustrates. From the various old worlds of the pre-modern era, a single new world emerged, slowly, amid much suffering, and accompanied by growing inequalities. What was gained and what was lost in the transformations born of global commerce have been the subject of great controversy ever since.